Hey, baby, I hear the blues are calling. Toss salads and scrambled eggs. Hi. Hi. What's wrong, buddy? Someone at work ate my sandwich. Well, what did the police say? My Thanksgiving leftover sandwich. I can't believe someone just ate it. You see, my, my sister makes these amazing turkey sandwiches. Her secret is she puts a, an extra slice of gravy-soaked bread in the middle. I call it the moist maker. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? It is that magical time of year, and I'm very happy to be doing a Thanksgiving special where we're going to be making Ross Geller's disgustingly named Moist Maker Thanksgiving Sandwich. For this, we're going to need a can of jellied cranberry sauce, a box of turkey-flavored stuffing, and most importantly, a package of 90-calorie I'm just f***ing with you. The night before sandwich day, we want to prep our 20-pound bird by butterflying it. This means cutting out the spine and flattening, which is a long, arduous process if you don't have the right scissors. Oop, if you, so go out and get some poultry shears, because this is really super hard, unless you have the right tools. Hang on to the spine. We're going to be making gravy out of that, but for now, it's time to remove the wishbone, which is going to make flattening the turkey a whole lot easier. Now, you can still make a wish with the wishbone, but it's, it's not quite the same, is it? Bust out your best chiropractor skills and press down hard on the center of the breastplate, breaking it in half. Turn the bird around so the audience can see what you're doing. Add about two tablespoons of baking soda to about a cup of salt and coat this guy liberally. You want it to look kind of like a light snowfall. Now our friend is headed to the fridge for 24 hours. You're going to want to get some sleep because tomorrow is going to be a long day. Oh, good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you don't mind if I work in my jammers. First things first, we got to make turkey stock. We're going to start by cutting our turkey spine and neck into manageable pieces that we want to brown in a large stock pot. Make sure you get some nice brown color all over. Before adding some aromatics, we want carrots, turnips, parsnips, onions, a little bit of thyme, black peppercorn, handful of parsley. And then we're going to cover it with cold water and bring it to a gentle simmer. It should already smell like Thanksgiving. Oh, don't forget to add a handful of halved garlic cloves. Set that aside to simmer and now it's time to make our stuffing. We're going to cube a whole loaf of good hearty sandwich bread that we're going to put on a large baking sheet and place in a low oven for about two hours. Just enough time to get dressed for dinner and start making our other stuffing stuff. We're going to start by browning a pound of plain pork sausage. Do this over high heat and keep letting it stick and scraping it up so we get some good fawn going. Remove it from the pan, add back a little bit of that great sausage fat and add your vegetables. We're going to start with onions, celery, and I'm drunk, so have a little bit of bacon fat. Saute that over medium heat until the vegetables are nice and soft, and then deglaze with some of your great turkey stock. Then we're going to add a quarter cup of minced sage, two tablespoons of chopped thyme, and an indiscriminate amount of chopped parsley. Let those flavors get to know each other before adding back in the sausage, mixing it all together, and adding it to our nice dried bread cubes. Add some turkey stock and mix it up, adjusting as necessary until you reach your desired consistency. It should be nice and soft, but you should still see whole pieces of bread in there before bringing three beaten eggs to the party. This is going to help bind together our stuffing. Mix well to combine. Aggressively butter a casserole and dump our stuffing inside. This guy's going to go into the oven for the last 30 minutes the bird is cooking. Speaking of which, you want to lay down a huge bed of chopped vegetables to prevent juices from the turkey burning, but that's all I have, so it's going to have to do. Throw down some thyme sprigs. Cover those with two baking racks, and after rinsing off the excess salt, place our bird on top. You want to get it as dry as possible. The drier, the better. You're going to get crispier skin that way. This guy's going into a 400 degree oven for about two hours. While that's going, we're going to make our cranberry sauce. We're going to start with a pound of cranberries and a cup of sugar a glug of any red wine you've got lying around the house, and just enough water to cover the cranberries. Don't forget a whole cinnamon stick, a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg, the juice of half an orange, and we're also going to hack off a hunk of the skin and throw that in there. That sounded a lot less gross in my head. Bring to an aggressive boil until it reaches an almost cranberry sauce-like consistency. Fish out our little treats, and it's gravy time. Start by making a roux from about three tablespoons each flour and butter before adding that beautiful turkey stock. Maybe just shy of two cups. 
Make sure you keep whisking it the whole time so you don't end up with any lumps. Season it with salt and pepper as desired and boil it down to your favorite consistency. I like my gravy the way I like my women, thin and rich. Sorry. Anyway, it's time to pull out the juiciest, crispiest, fastest cooking turkey you've ever made that we're going to tent with foil and let rest for at least 30 minutes before transferring it to a cutting board, removing the thighs and drumsticks, make slices down each side of the breastbone, cut underneath each breast and remove for easy slicing. Try a little bit to make sure it's not poisoned. Nope, it's good. So we're going to cut this into slices for our sandwich and then it's assembly time. I'm going to start with a layer of white meat, some stuffing, and the secret to Monica's ultimate Thanksgiving sandwich, the moist maker. A slice of bread dipped in gravy. Then I'm going dark meat on the top, more stuffing, some cranberry sauce, a slice of bread, squish it down, slice it up, and check out that cross section. Then eat it as fast as you can before your coworkers steal it.